Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And today I am back with another home project. So today we are finally tackling this dirt. So my house is on a slope. I've been planting grass, but there is still this whole bit of dirt right here that there's a big hole. It gets very pitted when it rains. So we are going to level this as best we can. We're going to put in a pea gravel path and then a pallet walkway on top of that pea gravel. Hopefully this will A, take care of the drainage issues that I'm having right now. See this big, big hole? That's, that's half of the problem. It will also give me a level place to walk because I about die out here every single day. So we've got, a, we've got quite the crew here today. My mom, my brother, and one of his friends is here because it's going to be a lot of shoveling and uh, it's going to be a good day. Hopefully we're going to get to most of it. I'm really excited. Let's get started. All right, y'all, so while they're digging the path, I'm gonna tackle these pallets. Um, I'm gonna use my Sawzall. I bought some special blades that can handle metal and wood with nails and that are long. And we are going to simply go through the ends on each side so we don't have to cut off, cut through the screws, and then we'll cut through the screws on the metal. And that's what's going to do our walkway. Let's go give this a try. I already cut through the ends on this one. This one I might have to cut a little straighter with my jigsaw, but that's okay. 
but that's the idea. Cut through each side and then through the screws in the middle. Just make sure you're watching your hands and your feet. You should probably wear some safety glasses. I'm gonna grab some of those. I'm gonna wear my sunglasses. Safety for the sun and nails. All right, y'all. So I'm cutting this, went off camera because the Sawzall was not quite working. So I'm gonna show you what we're doing instead. Also, it's so humid in Alabama, I might die, send help. Okay, so the Sawzall starts off strong, but then as it loses grip, it veers off, which is not a huge deal, but it's just not straight. And then on the other side, where it doesn't have enough grip, can't hold it steady, it's leaving these little ears because it's getting halfway down and then the board's breaking off. So I went ahead, I bit the bullet, I got out the circular saw, I tested it out, I just cut straight through this side. That worked a lot better, so that is what we're going to do. Again, make sure you wear your eye protection, ear protection if you've got it. Keep your hands and toes inside the ride at all times. You want a pretty path, not a hospital visit. Also, put on mascara to start this project as I was doing my little intro. And uh, now I'm regretting that. All right, y'all, so we are on day two of this project. Um, we got really far yesterday, but obviously not all the way done. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what we've done, what we still have to do today, and what we're gonna have to do next week. So, so far we have leveled and put pea gravel all the way up to the front steps, all the way out in this area. Ants are already trying to take over, so that'll be fun. You can see all the way up to where the tree garden ring is gonna be. So where this hose is, that's going to be a little garden. So right out here, this way, is going to lead right here to a parking pad for my car. And then this is what we still have left to do. So let me turn around and show you what we did yesterday. All of this. As you can see, the pea gravel definitely is a different color when wet, watered all my baby grass. But I knew that because the stuff I've used by the house does that as well. I'm, I mean, it's just what it is. Things turn colors when they're wet. So we still have to dig all of this out, all the way down, and it's gonna go right here and end by the stock tank. So mom, as you saw yesterday, dug down all the way down to three, three bricks and put in the retaining wall. It looks really good. She did a good job. I'm glad she decided that was her job. All of this dirt still has to come out. And here's my project, all the pallet boards. So we got them all cut down and I've been drilling the holes. So I'm a little hot and sweaty already. I've been over here doing that this morning. All right, so I've done half. I'm gonna show you how to do it. I still have to do this half. And then I'm gonna grab my, my Wagner spray gun and we are going to stain all of these. Of course, you don't have to stain them, but they're pallet wood, so they're rough. 
And here in Alabama, it is humid. Humid all the time, which means moisture gets in everything. Moisture gets in the pallet wood and then it rots them just a million times faster. I don't wanna to have to redo this project every like five minutes. So we are going to be staining these with the same stain that I used on my deck. A link to that video. I'd stained that with my Wagner sprayer as well. It is graded to hold up for a very long time. So I'm going to be staining these. I've got 95 of them. So we are using the sprayer. Should go much faster than by hand. And that way, both sides, top and bottom, they will be sealed from moisture getting in. The hope is they'll last us a long time. So let me show you how I'm dil dilling, drilling the holes for our ties. And then we're just gonna keep working. We're gonna at least get the, the boards installed on the half of the pea gravel that is, um, that is already set. And then next week when my brother can come back, we'll get the rest of this dug. We'll see. I may dig it. I don't want to, but I might. All right, y'all. So I have learned it is easiest if we stack them up, we do three or four at a time. So I stack them so that the edges are all straight. And then it doesn't have to be exact, but I try to do about four fingers from the edge. And then I'm going to do my hole here and you want to hold them tight and steady but fingers far away from that drill bit and then just go straight down. We're not making perfect holes, so that's fine. And this drill bit should be small enough that the top of our anchor will cover any, uh, any imperfections that are too weird. All right, so then we're gonna turn them around. A little harder with the tripod right there. Do the same on the other side. Perfect. Make sure to brush any sawdust off because our next step is painting. And while we wanna paint our boards, do not wanna paint the sawdust. The tighter you hold your boards, the less, less of this stuff you're going to have. Some boards just splinter more than others. They're not as good a wood. You can see from the sides of this and that it's just prone to splintering. And we just keep going. Setting these up on these boards with the ends off the edges so that I can spray and get the top and all four sides at the same time. Hit the next one. All right, y'all, so now we are going to get ready to stain all these boards I showed you this morning. Mom helped me finish all of the pilot holes for our little, I keep calling them railroad ties, but they're like landscaping pins, I guess. Um, so now that the holes are finished, we are going to spray them. We are going to spray them top, sides, bottom, everything. It is just, I mean, beyond humid in Alabama. So we want to make sure they're really sealed from all the humidity so they don't rot right away. I'm using this super deck stain. It's the same stuff I use for my porch. It is graded for many, many years in the humidity and the rain. It is graded for outside use on a flat deck. So I've already sprayed it through this. This is my Wagner Flexio sprayer. I keep calling it a heat gun. It is not a heat gun. It is a paint sprayer. It's very easy to use even if you've never used a paint sprayer before. And it will make this so much faster than if I had to brush every single one of these boards. There's 95 of them individually, all sides. So I've just been stirring this up. You can see I've got half a can left from my deck and my stairs. So we are going to go ahead and pour this right in and we are going to get started. And I'm hoping 
that this goes very quickly because I want to go in the air conditioning. Sure, bro. The paper's how out. Put on that plant right there. I like to be able to reuse my paint sticks. <laughs> I don't know why I can get new ones. This little guy just makes pouring easier, especially if you're trying to keep, I mean, it never, never lasts long, but I try to keep my paint sprayer looking nice. I'm going to go ahead and fill this baby all the way up. I don't know that we're going to need a whole, um, whole can to spray. We might need more. We might need less. I think we used four of these for the whole deck, two coats. So I doubt we're going to need more than one, but famous last words, right? All right. So that was about probably that much stain to fill this baby up. And now we're going to put it on here nice and tight so that it does not leak. Easy peasy. If you've never used one of these before, the tip here, your fan is going to come out perpendicular to the cross beam. So if this is the cross beam, the fan is going to come out this way. If I want to spray the other direction, I turn that nozzle and now my spray is going to come out this way. So when I'm spraying the sides here, this is perfect. You're just going to spray a, a wide fan all the way across. The top here is going to control your power. I find that for stain, usually anywhere from a five to a seven is a good consistency. This is thinner stain, even though it protects well and is fairly thick, sprays on really easy. We're gonna get started. Wish me luck. All right, y'all, we are starting to put the pallets down and mom has got a system going. So tell them what we're doing, mom. We put the boards down and then we put these two little spacers in between them so we can have a... System? Yeah, a little bit of a... Even spacing. even spacing. Even though the boards are all different widths and lengths and whatever, there'll be the same space between them. Yeah, and make sure, like since there were nails in these, Make sure when you put them down that you put the nail parts, you know. Yeah. I mean, we cut them off as best as we can, but you don't want to step on any nails. There's if there's still some sharp parts. If there's any sharp parts on both sides of the board, you need to make sure that you need to fix that first. Yeah. So do you want to try to pound one in? Yeah. Give me. All right. So here's what we're using. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I don't even know how you say it. They're anchoring spikes. Vigoro. All right, and here's a mallet. Okay. Let's see how this works. Oh my gosh, I hope this goes well. That's all I gotta say. We are so tired. It'll be worth it. It'll be so worth it. Maybe not for you, but it'll be worth it for me. All right. And you do want to, you know, get your little pallet pieces down as level in the pea gravel as possible. And then when you push the spikes in, that will help hold them in place. Killing it, Mom. Now here's the question. When clumsy people walk on that, how Ooh. sturdy is it? It's pretty pretty strong, yeah. Alright, because Mom and I are both um, healthy girls. 
<laughs> healthy clumsy girls oh yeah that too <laughs> i was talking more about coordination but yeah you are not wrong and we are just gonna do that all the way around So after days and days and days of work, we are finished. So first day we worked, this took half a day, so we had to call it, call it quick. And then mom and I worked a full day. I worked several hours over the course of a week, but not a full day. And then yesterday, we did a full day again. We're up eight. Okay, so not a full day, about five. That's pretty close. Basically, I think add it all up the entire path probably took about two full days of work maybe three either way it was so worth it it's a a lot more functional i don't know if you noticed but i was having all this rainwater and it's slow so just it coming down the hill causing huge rivets in this dirt here which is not a great look and it's I'm falling over every night. I'm super clumsy. So A, this is going to be much better for the grading of my slope, for the foundation of my house, for my ankles, <laughs> but also it looks better. Now we could have just done the key gravel and called it quits, but all of the pallet boards we went around and gathered, they didn't cost us anything but work. And I used stain that I had left over from when I seen my deck. So it didn't really cost as much to put these in other than the price of the increase stakes. And the actual pallet boards, I mean, they make it so much easier to walk on this path. 100% worth every little bit of effort. This is gonna make my life every day easier. Now, you don't have to stain them if you live in a climate where you can have wood outside. But for most of us, that's not a great solution, especially here in Alabama. Y'all, it's humid. Like, you watched the video up to this point. It's hot out here. You watched any of the parts where I was talking, you could tell it's hot out here. So, these needed to be stained. They needed to be sealed from the humidity, from the moisture, from my sprinklers, from the rain. Also, if you're putting wood close to your house, even without a humid climate, 
you want to seal the wood so that termites, um, carpenter ants, other bugs don't make these a home and then come to your house and eat all your wood. So either way, I'm really glad we did this. I'm going to give you a brief overview and then I'm going to put some pretty after shots. Hope you liked this project. Hope you are following along with the whole house journey. I've got several videos on buying my house, having it put in, staining the deck, everything. But I think this might be our last uh, our last project for the summer. I do still have several videos that I haven't finished for you guys, like putting in the black edging, putting in my window boxes. We've got lots still put together for you. So let's go ahead and give you a brief overview of the pack and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Okay, so up here we actually have a nice big area to park my car. So when I get out of the car, start on this little path. I will give you an update over on Instagram once all of these rocks fade into the white. And once all of my grass comes in, because that's going to make a huge difference. But just focusing on the path, it takes you right down to the front steps. And I just love how everything goes together. Dun, dun, dun. And then we did go around here. Next year, we're gonna make this little space an extra garden. But for this year, I mean, Garden's looking pretty good for the first year. I can't wait to see it next year, that's for sure. This was the real challenge because as you can see, it's a slope. And so before, from here down was one big slope and to walk on it, you were sideways so we had to dig this all the way out my mom volunteered to put in this little retaining wall and it turned out way better than i ever imagined and now i can actually walk down here without killing myself which makes it super easy to come over and access my little vegetable garden, which is almost done for the season. And normally my trash can goes right here. Now I am going to finish the path around to the trash can place. And I don't know what I'm going to do with these steps. They were originally my front steps, but I had some custom ones built because obviously these are better for clumsy people, <laughs> but maybe we'll tackle over here next. You want to see the stock tank garden be planted. I do have a video on that. I will link below. I have got so many cucumbers and strawberries from that this summer before all the rain started. I absolutely love this little path. I hope you guys do too. Bye.